Hey everyone, today I'm going to be replacing my fuel injectors. My car has around 77,000 miles and some B58s seem to have issues with injectors at higher mileage. It can cause misfires and worst case scenario blow your engine. So I definitely want to do this as preventative maintenance. While I'm in there, I'm also going to do the coils, the spark plugs, and the O2 sensor and just getting a full refresh. Overall, this job isn't too hard. The only main tool you need is the injector removal tool and I'll make sure to have that in the description below. So yeah, let's get into it. So like every job where you're messing with electrical connectors, you want to make sure to disconnect the battery. It's just a 10 millimeter, and then you want to put that to the side. And then I also like to pull this up so I don't accidentally close the trunk on myself. Next, we're going to remove the plastic covering. So it's three 10 millimeter bolts, quarter ton each, and then you should be able to remove it. And now do the same on the other side as well. Next, you're going to remove this plastic molding and the line that goes within it. It should just pull off. Next, we're going to remove the strut brace. So that's going to be four E18s. There's two hidden under these black covers, just pop them out and take them out. Next we'll take off this plastic piece, take the clip out, and then there should be seven 10 millimeter bolts. Four on this side, and three on this side. And now it should come out. And lastly, you want to remove this sound insulation, it just pulls right out. Next, I'm removing the ignition coil, so I'll pop all those connectors out. Next, we're going to remove the E8 bolt and pull the coil out and cover the hole because you don't want anything getting in there and repeat for all six. Next, I'm going to remove the fuel rail, so put a rag underneath because you're going to get some fuel leakage and then put a 17 millimeter and slowly crack it open and let all the fuel drain out and then you want to repeat that on the other two connections as well. And then the fuel rail should just come right out. Next I'm going to remove this harness. It has two 8mm bolts holding it on and after you take those off you should just be able to pull it right off. And that gives us more room to disconnect the fuel injectors. Now I'm going to disconnect the fuel injector so it has the clip you pop out and then you should be able to just pop out the whole connector and that should give us more room to remove the harness. You also want to disconnect this fuel pressure sensor. And before we remove the injectors, you want to blow some compressed air in there just to get rid of any dirt. You don't want any dirt falling in the cylinder. I don't have an air compressor, so I'm just using this compressed air can. Next, we're going to start working on the fuel rail. So remove the four bolts shown in red. These are going to be E8s. And now we're going to work on the injector bolts. These are E6 Torx. There should be six of them. For these bolts, once you loosen one side, the other side might be loose. And this is normal. And now you can just remove the fuel rail. Now you're going to repeat the same thing for the other rail as well. Now we're going to use the injector removal tool to remove the injectors. It came with this little black piece and the way you use it, you face it to the back of the car and then you rotate it towards the passenger side and it should lock in place. Next, you're going to set this bar on top of the injector, but before you do that, you're going to need to remove this, so you just push it in and pull that silver piece out. It came with these bolts and spacers, and that's actually what's going to hold the bar in place while we remove the injectors. So you want to start off by lining the bar on top of the injectors, and then see which bolt holes line up, and then put the spacer underneath and push the bolt through, and that should hold it in place. Next, I'm going to screw these in and get them as low as possible so we can remove the injectors. And these are counterclockwise to go in. After that, you're going to insert the silver piece you removed earlier and thread that onto the black piece on top of the injector. And then we should be able to pull them out. 
After that, you're going to take a wrench to the brass nut and just rotate it clockwise and that should pull the injector out. And repeat that for the other two injectors as well. After that, you can take out the bolts we were using to hold the bar in place. And then you should just be able to remove the injectors as one piece. And now you want to repeat that for the other set of injectors as well. And now we're going to take the old injectors off and install the new ones on the rail. So you just take it off the tool and then you want to take the little metal piece off the old injectors and put it on the new one and then you want to line it up on the rail. And then you want to take the bolt and start threading them in on both sides. Next you're going to take the spacer that came with the injector removal kit and put it in between the injector. This just makes sure that the injector is at the right space so for you to put it back into the rail. And then you want to hand tighten this with the spacer in place. And then after you tighten it, you want to make sure the bolts are even on both sides. If they are not, just readjust them, but this is important. After that, you want to repeat that on all six injectors. Make sure that the threads are even on all of them. Alright, now we can start to put the injectors back in. Make sure to gently put it back in place and make sure everything lines up and is even. And then you can start to hand thread the bolts for the rail back in and then we are going to torque them down after that. And then you want to repeat the same process for the other fuel rail and hand tighten those four bolts as well. Now we're going to tighten the fuel rail down and you have to follow this sequence for tightening the bolt. So you're going to go one, two, three, four. And I'm slowly going to tighten each bolt a little at a time. And I would only do 90 degrees at a time to make sure the rail goes in even. For this first round, I'm only going to tighten these bolts to 2 newton meters. For this next round, you're going to set your torque wrench to 5 newton meters and do 90 degrees on each bolt and move on until you hear it click. So you do 90 degrees, move to the next one 90 degrees until you hear a click on all of them. And then I'm just going to double check everything is torqued to 5 newton meters. Now repeat that on the other fuel rail as well. And now we're going to torque down the fuel injectors. You're going to do the same thing. Set your torque wrench to 5 newton meters and alternate 90 between 1, 2, 1, 2 and then move on to the next injector. And you want to repeat that for all six injectors. The injectors are done, but since I'm here, I'm going to change my spark plugs. These get torqued down to 17 foot-pounds. From here, you want to install your ignition coils back in, and these are going to get torqued down to 8 newton meters. And then you want to install the rest of your ignition coils back in. After that, you want to install your fuel rail back in, make sure to hand tighten it, and then you can tighten it down with a 17 millimeter wrench. After that, you want to plug your harness back in, make sure to bolt down the two 8 millimeter grounds we took off, and then make sure to install all the fuel connectors and the ignition coils and any other connectors you might have taken off during the install. Alright, time to start it back up. Make sure to connect the battery back and then scan for any codes. Make sure there's no codes because you took a lot of connectors off. And then after that you can try your first start. Just a note, it's going to take a bit to start up because you already drained all the fuel out the lines. So just be patient. And now is a great time to check for any leaks and check for any codes and you should be good from here. But anyways, thank you for watching, like, comment, and subscribe and I'll keep you guys posted on the progress of the tune and hopefully you get some draggy numbers and dyno numbers soon.